Now, to unpack the increasingly shrill pylon over Australia Day, I'm joined by Gemma Tognini, Sky News contributor, newspaper columnist, communications consultant. Gemma is a living example of Australia as a migrant nation. She comes from a, an Italian-Australian family. Hello, Kel. Merry oh. Christmas to you. Now, this pylon, it's a bit like, you know, Easter buns starting to turn up at Christmas. It just gets earlier and earlier every year. What's going on? I... I uh... Uh, very, very loaded question, and I listened with interest to your to your editorial there. And I look, I, I'm, I'm going to gently push back on a few things in the sense that yes, I am definitely uh, a representation of some of the wonderful fabric that makes up this country. It's, I've written extensively in the Australian about my family history. My dad came from Italy on a boat called the Australia. It arrived on the 26th of January in uh, 1955. My mum was born into a middle-class Brisbane family and uh, her mother was of Scottish-German descent and her father was English and I believe originally potentially also German, but essentially I'm a mix. Uh, yes, I'm, a I'm blend a of all the things that made a Australia. A blend of all the yes. things. However, I, I, I think that the conversation around Australia, I think there's a section, let me just preface it with this, there's a section of the community that are hell-bent on being on opposed to anything and everything that you could put into the bucket of the conservative centre-right of politics or even the centre of politics. There is a cohort, typically the Greens, they don't like anything, they don't like history, they don't like Australia, they don't like anything, they are, you know, Lydia Thorpe who sits in Parliament goes, I'm not swearing allegiance to the King slash Queen because it's yep, a... God. Yep. Well, then don't take the job and the money, love, off your trot. Yes, yep. That is a cohort of people who will never change. They're never going to respect the country that affords them the life that they live. However, my experience amongst my friends and amongst our clients is that there is a shifting desire to have a conversation around Australia Day that is more mature than the ones that we've had before. I don't personally believe that if you look at... Um, local governments calling the shots on Australia Day. I mean, stick to your knitting, stick to placemaking, stick to picking up the garbage well, and designing Local streets. governments, roads, rates and rates. Right. Uh, yeah, so that's what I, I think that they are 100% out of their lane and need yep, to be yep. put back in their lane like a sideshow. I think there needs to be a, a mature conversation. I think Warren Mundine is right. We can't live in the past. But I, I can I just be completely vulnerable for a second? We've, we've in my business, we've started doing some work in the last year with an, a wonderful Indigenous group in Western Australia that is all about... It's called Ember Connect. It's... Um, we're not getting paid much at all, so I'm not uncomfortable in membering, me, me, mentioning the business. It's a, it's a love project, put it that way. And I am really humbled to say that I've learned a lot through my um, association with this business. I have seen things from a perspective that I had never seen before. I remember speaking to a particular woman whose grandmother was part of the stolen generation and you kind of go, oh, well, that's a grandmother, that's two generations before. But hearing her talk about it and hearing the the pain that's still associated with that, it's impossible to not be changed. Does that mean that I think Australia Day should be changed? Personally, not yet, but I think that we have to have a conversation that is that is more mature um, and, and, I, and that applies to the people who, you know, who sit there and, as I said, they're just, they're just waiting for someone to be, you know, something we, to rail against. We won't against. win them. We won't win them. I mean, the... the no, the, that's the, right. They're the never, negative, they're we're never going to win. people who think that hoiking down it, statues is going to actually achieve something. Yeah. OK. We can write them off because we think they're silly. Right. But if you look at America, people from all kinds of backgrounds are excited about being in America and being right. American. Yeah. Isn't it possible for people to be as excited as that about being in Australia and being Australian? I truly think most Australian? people are. So I think I they really are too. I really do. My, yes. my conviction and my experience is that most people love this country. They are grateful for this country. Black, white, brindle, yellow, Italian, half a mix like I am. I love this country. It doesn't mean that you don't have issues that you need to wrestle out. I think... I think it was the Australian's editorial, correct me if I'm wrong, within the, sometime within the last ten, week to ten days that said Australia Day can't be allowed to die a death of a thousand cuts. What I don't want to see as a, just as a voter and as a, as a person who calls this country home and dearly loves it is I don't want to see the tail wagging the dog. So I don't want to see a potential change to Australia Day down the track that is born out of animosity or... Division. Yeah, that division, kind of absolutely. Yes, yes, However... Yes. If in time there's a process where, and this is all hypothetical, obviously, Kel, I, I think 
if there's a process by where we arrive as a country at something different for the right reasons and it's uniting us, well, then that's something that we should in, embrace and, and celebrate. But we're not there yet. No, and we've got those three foundations. Is there not a quick final question? Is there not a way we can say Indigenous heritage, British culture, migrant character can all be brought together? Well, I would hope so, and I hope that if, if people, if people in whatever platform that they, they have, I, you know, it... it, it it's, it's a message that I would like to carry, that you should carry, but just one... I know we need to get wrapped up. I can hear the director in your ear, but even the, the point about language before, I mean, I think Indigenous language and Indigenous culture is wonderful and needs to be preserved. Like, in my country, in Italy, my father's country, rather, the dialect from my dad's village to my cousin's village to my other cousin's village, which is separated by kilometres, like two or three kilometres each, the dialect is completely different. No-one understands But this is what other. you're getting. We're getting white academics now who are preserving Aboriginal languages because... I I don't know that that's always the case. It, it has been for some decades. So there's, there, I think there is a fascination in, in preserving what was here for but a pre long time. Preserving language is important. Yes. I think it's critically important. It doesn't yeah. matter what culture you're from. Yeah, well, some... Well, my forebears were from Cornwall and there is no longer a Cornish <laughs> language. So I... I, uh, I well, that's I, a shame. But we can bring these things together and we can all be a, a mixed family. If the, if the Les Murray's common pot sort of yeah, idea. Yeah, if the measuring stick is, are we united? Yep. Is this born out of a desire for unity? Fantastic. If the if the measuring stick fails that and it's there's these, you know, yarpies in the background, I don't even know if that's a word, you could probably tell me that it's not, these people in the background baying for change because yep. they hate yep. the country. That is not the reason to change no. anything. And, and I will let the Oxford know that, that yarpies is a new <laughs> word that has just been coined by Jonathan I'm so Yeni. sorry. That's, no, 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 no. We need new words all the time. Oh. Gemma, many thanks. Thank you for having me, Kel.